Uh, so thank you very much for the opportunity to, to give this talk. So my goal today will be to present a tableau formula for McDonald polynomials uh, exclusively from the perspective of two particle processes called the ASAP and the Tazer. So here's an overview of my talk. So I'm going to uh, define these two forms of the type A symmetric McDonald polynomial. So there's P lambda, and then it's related to the modified McDonald H lambda through a uh, formal operation called plethism. And then these two polynomials are uh, connected to these two particle processes called the ASEP and the TASERP. So the ASEP is the asymmetric simple exclusion process. The TASERP is the totally asymmetric zero range process. And the way they are connected is they specialize to the partition functions. And these two models uh, are connected to each other through fusion. So we have some explicit combinatorial formulas that uh, make these connections apparent. So there's the multi-line Q formula uh, that on one hand gives a formula for McDonald, on the other hand uh, lets us compute stationary probabilities for the ASAP. And then there is a Q inversion or Quinn tableau formula that does the analog for the TASERP and the modified McDonald polynomials. However, uh, there is no, uh, there's no uh, clear connection between these two formulas. So in this talk, I'm going to give a new formula for uh, this side of the picture that uh, arises from this uh, Quinn tableau formula through superization, uh, which is uh, the um, sort of the algebraic uh, version of fusion. So let's start on defining these models. Uh, so both the ASEP and the TASERP are uh, one-dimensional particle processes on a circular lattice, in our case. So n is going to be the number of sites. And we let lambda be a partition that represents the types of particles that are on uh, the lattice. And these particle types, we call them species. And then our convention is that the larger species are stronger. And then we'll fix a parameter t that's between 0 and 1. So the ASAP. Uh, is a model in which we can have at most one particle per site. And states of the ASAP are all possible rearrangements of the parts of lambda on these sites. And so we'll represent the states as a composition that is just a permutation of lambda. And so here we're going to read the state starting from the top and we'll read clockwise. So this state is 2, 0, 3, 2, 1. And the dynamics of the ASAP are the following. So uh, any two adjacent particles can swap. They will swap with probability 1 if the one to the left has larger priority and probability t otherwise. So that is why it's called the asymmetric simple exclusion process because the probability of hopping left is uh, usually smaller than the probability of hopping right, because t is less than 1. And then at t equals 0, we call this the totally asymmetric exclusion process, so taste up, where particles can only move in one direction. And then we have uh, a similar process, the zero range process, except that here we can allow multiple particles in e at each site. And now our states are multi-set compositions, 
that are all possible rearrangements of these particle types on the lattice. And again, we read the states uh, from, from the top clockwise, so this is the state corresponding to this picture. And here, the transitions are only dependent on the site from which a transition occurs. So any particle can jump uh, one site clockwise, and it jumps with a rate that depends on a parameter uh, xj, where j is the site number, so it's a site-dependent parameter, and t to some power, and the power of t is the number of particles at that site with larger priority. So, for example, if this one wants to jump to the, to the right uh, clockwise, then there are two particles of larger priority, so it's going to jump with the rate uh, t squared times the, the site parameter. Okay, and there are many versions of the zero range process that have been studied, uh, and this particular version of it was, was first uh, studied by Takayama, as far as I know. Okay. Yes. Um, when do particles decide to jump? Uh, so it's a continuous time process, so there's an exponential clock attached to each particle, and then this is the, the rate attached to the exponential clock. Okay. okay. So now let's very briefly define McDonald polynomials, or just what we need to know about them for this talk to make sense. So we'll take x to be our set of variables, and we'll take the ring of symmetric functions in x, coefficients that are rational functions in parameters q and t. And so the McDonald polynomials denoted p lambda, or introduced by McDonald, uh, are a family of symmetric functions that are characterized by triangularity and orthogonality properties. They form a basis for this ring, and they uh, generalize the Schur functions at q equals t. They also generalize several other uh, well-known families of symmetric functions like Hall-Littlewood, q Whitaker, and Jack polynomials. So um, specifically, when we set one of the parameters to zero, we get Hall-Littlewood and q Whitaker, respectively. So the modified McDonald polynomials, denoted by this h, H tilde, were introduced by Garcia and Heyman. They're a combinatorial form of P lambda obtained by a formal operation called plethism that I will uh, describe a little bit more later on. So here we have some constant factor that depends on Q and T. This is some... Um, yeah, this is some polynomial in Q and T. And then we have the plethistic substitution of x uh, over 1 minus t inverse. And the reason this is called the combinatorial form is because their coefficients are actually positive integers. And in fact, here in this example, you can see that these polynomials are sure positive, so they expand with positive integer coefficients, or polynomials in Q and T with positive integer coefficients in the sure functions. So these are uh, very, very special polynomials. Okay, so that's how we relate the P's and the H's. So some history of how these polynomials have been studied combinatorially. So in 2004, Hagman, Heyman, Lur gave a formula for uh, the modified McDonald as a sum over fillings of tableau with certain statistics, mag and inv, so the major index and inversions. So a tableau is a 
well, a collection of boxes of shape lambda where the columns are given by the parts of lambda. So here lambda is 3, 3, 3, 2, 1 um, in, our, in our picture. And a filling of a tableau is any assignment of positive integers to the cells of the tableau. And then the statistics madge and inf are computed by certain configurations of entries uh, in, in the filling. So there is uh, a method called superization that allows, uh, allows us to derive a formula using the same statistic for P through this plethistic correspondence in terms of certain tableau that are called non-attacking. And so here the inv statistic turns into co-inv. Co-inv just means the, the negative of inv. And so unfortunately this is not a nice formula because uh, because we have this kind of ugly prefactor uh, that, that makes it just not, not very good to work with. You also have an ugly postfactor. <laughs> well, that's not going to go away. <laughs> um, but my goal for this talk is to make this, this factor look less ugly. Okay, so then some other related formulas. So there's a quantum alcov walk model for P lambda that's actually type independent. So everything I'm talking about today is in type A. Um, but this formula due to Raman Yip is type independent. However, it's, uh, it's hard to work with combinatorially. And there also, uh, there have been quite a few uh, formulas that come from integrability. Um, I have definitely not cited everyone who has been working on this. Um, so in particular, there are some vertex model and colored lattice path formulas. Okay, so now how do we get McDonald polynomials from the ASAP? So define the partition function of the ASEP to be the sum over the unnormalized probabilities at stationarity. And so there's this beautiful result by Cantini, Dehir, and Wheeler from 2015, where they found that the partition function of the ASEP is a specialization of P lambda when we set all variables to one except for T. And here t is the same t as the hopping parameter in the a sub. And James Martin found a formula for these stationary probabilities using multi-line cues. And this motivated us to search for a multi-line Q formula for the full McDonald polynomial. And by us, I mean Lauren Williams and Sylvie Quartel. So let me now describe this multi-line Q formula very briefly. So let's fix lambda to be a partition and to be the number of sites. So a multi-line Q of type lambda n is a configuration of balls or particles on a lattice with n columns and lambda one rows. Lambda one is the size of the largest part, such that we have lambda j conjugate uh, balls in, in row j. So here's an example of such an arrangement. And then, uh, this can be represented as a queuing system described as a coupled system of single species a sub. So we can imagine each row to be a single species a sub. And then, uh, so in the t equals zero case, this object was uh, introduced by Ferrari and Martin. 
And then, and then Martin uh, generalized it to T. So then we can also, uh, we also have a pairing procedure that allows us to pair balls from a row above to balls in the row below. And then this pairing determines a labeling. So when balls from row three pair, they uh, send the label three to the balls below and so on. And this labeling, we call this a projection map onto the ASAP. And the projection is just reading off the labels from the bottom row coming from this pairing. So here, uh, the labels at the bottom row are 3, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So this multi-line Q corresponds to this state of the ASAP, so 3, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, and then to each of these uh, configurations and pairings, we associate a weight, which is a uh, monomial in X times a rational function in the parameters Q and T. So X is going to keep track of the, col the column content, so the number of balls in each column. Uh, T is going to count the number of balls skipped over during the pairing procedure. And Q is going to count pairings that wrap around the lattice because this is a cylinder. And then finally, if we take, so, Mar so Martin's theorem is that if we take the weight in just T, then we get the stationary probability of the ASAP by summing over all multi-line Qs whose bottom row projects to that state. And so, in some more detail for how we get the weights, so whenever a ball uh, chooses somebody to pair with, we count the number of available balls that get skipped during this pairing. So let's say that this ball chose to pair with this one, so it's pairing to the, to the right. So, and suppose we wrapped around j times before settling down, then the total weight of this pairing is going to be t to the 3j plus 2, because every time we wrap, we skip three balls. And then we also skip these two balls. So that's 3j plus 2. And then q uh, is the number, counts the wrappings. So it's just, we wrap j plus 1 times, times a certain uh, factor called, that we call leg, which depends on the particle type. Yes? Oh, sorry. I think that's going to help you. Just the 1 minus t is showing up next. Oh, yeah. Uh, I forgot to put a 1 minus t here. There's supposed to be a 1 minus t. Um, OK. So then, if we sum over all the possible ways of this particle pairing with this one, that's going to be a sum over all possible j's. And that gives us this geometric series, uh, which looks like this. So we get this term here, where uh, here the exponent of the q is the leg, the exponent of the t is the, number of, the minimum number of skip balls, and then here we have another leg, and here we have uh, the number of available balls at the time of pairing. And we do this for every pairing, and then we get the total weight of the multi-line Q. And so finally, this is the weight of the multi-line Q. So we take the product over all pairings, and then we have this um, wrapping and skipping uh, count. And so remember that we were talking about this ugly uh, post factor in the McDonald polynomial. So this is that ugly post factor. And so now our theorem with Sylvie and Lauren is that we get the full McDonald polynomial by summing over all multi-line Qs of type lambda with these weights. So now let's talk about how to get a formula for the modified McDonald polynomial using this, uh, this idea. 
So. Can, can I quickly? Yes. Um, so these are supposed to be symmetric polynomials. Yes. In the variables x, right? And then x is supposed to be marking column content. So I should be able to somehow arbitrarily permute the columns. Yes, they are, they are symmetric. Easy? Yeah, is it easy to see from this, or is that kind of mysterious? It's not that easy to see. It's but not quite mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think it's about as easy to see as the original hagelin heyman lur formula. Um, it's, not, it's not the hardest thing to see, but it's not, it's not easy, yeah. Okay, so here we recall the formula for H through plethysm. So plethysm is just a formal substitution of variables. So if we expand one over one minus T inverse as a power series, we get one plus T inverse plus T to the minus two and so on. So what we do is instead of plugging in the variables X1, X2, X3 into P lambda, we instead replace each xi with this uh, countable sequence of xi times powers of t. And so what we're really computing here is the, McDonald the, the p lambda with all of these variables replacing the xi's. And so if we think about what a multi-line Q is, is giving us, so multi-line Q on N columns gives us P lambda on N variables. So if we want uh, countably many variables, then we just need countably many columns that are labeled by these, these monomials. So let's imagine that that's what we have. So here, I'm going to, since I know these are symmetric, I'm going to order the variables however I want. So I'll have all of my x1s first, then my x2s, then my x3s. And now I'm going to just compress this all into, uh, into this picture where all the balls in the x1 area are in column x1 x2 area, they're in column x2, so I forget about the t's. And now what I have is a multi-line diagram where I can allow multiple balls to be at each site. Also, since I want to have t to the minus one replacing t, I, I'm now going to have all my pairings going to the left. So that's why these pairings turn into these ones. So, this corresponds to fusion in the setting of integrable systems, and uh, so some related work is Garbali and Wheeler found, uh, found a, a colored paths model for the modified McDonald that came from fusion of the P lambda lattice path model. And so we conjectured that these that these fillings with uh, certain skipping statistics will give us the modified McDonald polynomials, and then we prove this with Arvind Iyer and James Martin. And more importantly, we found that we get a projection to the multi-species zero range process from these objects. So, uh, so let me now describe the tableau that we use to get our formulas. So here I'm going to associate a string of paired balls to a column in the tableau. So here I have ball from column two, pairing to column three, pairing to column one, pairing to column three. So I record two, three, one, three in the tableau. And here's another one, I, so I record that one. And then, uh, so one thing you might notice is that I haven't specified an order of recording the strings. So that, so that does come into play. Uh, we're going to have to take the sum over all possible orders of recording them. 
OK, so a multi-line diagram gives us a filling. The column content of the multi-line diagram corresponds to the monomial weight of the filling. So here we have six balls in column one. That corresponds to six ones in the tableau. The non-wrapping pairings are now corresponding to what used to be the wrapping pairings in the multi-line queue. And those are the descents, or those give us the major index for the tableau. And then the skipped particles are counted as certain Q inversion triples. So we look at triples of cells where a particle in this row is pairing with a particle in that row. And as it does so, it skips over a particle somewhere to the right. So that's what we call a Q inversion. It's just looking at these triples and seeing if the entries in them uh, increase cyclically when we read them counterclockwise. And so that's how we get the weight. And so that's, this is our result, that we get the modified McDonald polynomial by summing over all possible fillings of the Young diagram with these weights, MAJ and Q inversions. So this MAJ is the same as the HHL MAJ. OK, so now. It turns out that we can also compute the stationary distribution of the TASERP by summing over all the uh, fillings that project to that state of the TASERP in the bottom row. And our proof was an explicit construction of a Markov chain on the tableau that projects to the TASERP. OK, and so as a corollary, we get that the partition function is a specialization of the modified McDonald at Q equals 1. OK, so uh, yeah. uh, one more back. So you were saying something about how you get to pick which order to <coughs> interpret the different. Yeah, we have to include all of the orders. So you would, does that mean your tableau can be not like you can have different columns that are first smaller and then larger? Yeah, because the thing is okay. that we also have a little triple that we're counting over here. Mm -hmm. It's called a degenerate triple when we just have the two cells Y and Z and X is empty. And so we also count that. And so if we were to swap the order of those columns, we would get a difference in T in the weight of those. And so that is, is count. That's we we have to incorporate that. Yeah, yeah, that's part of the formula. OK, so, so here's the picture we have so far. So what we do next is we show how to get a tableau formula, an analogous tableau formula for p lambda and the ASAP. Uh, that uses the same Q inversion statistic and uses the standard superization technique. OK, so this is going to be a slightly technical slide. So we can rearrange this plothistic correspondence to get a formula for P in terms of H just by multiplying both sides by 1 minus t inverse. And so now, so let's take uh, x and y to be two alphabets. Let's take g to be a symmetric function in one alphabet. So the superization of g is, uh, is defined as this, using this plothistic notation. So essentially, we have a function that's symmetric in x and supersymmetric in y. So if we have a tableau formula for G in the alphabet X, we can get a tableau formula for the superization in the alphabets X and Y, where every time we see an entry in the Y alphabet, we get a factor of minus 1. So that's what we're going to do. So uh, 
when we have this t minus 1, then we end up with this, with this uh, expression in terms of the supersymmetric function. So here, x bar is just negative x. So we can express the p lambda as a, the supersymmetric function for the McDonald polynomial where we use the positive and negative alphabet, and each positive entry gets a t inverse, and each negative entry, well, gets a negative one. Sorry, I'm yeah. confused about the first, first equality on this line. Omega, uh, omega y is misplaced, right? Here? Yeah. Because? Yes. Uh, because you've just... Well, the y is supposed to correspond to this second term. No, no, but you've just written xt minus 1 is xt comma minus x. Or have I misunderstood? Yes. So then there is no omega y. I mean, with the equality... Yeah, I think you're right. I think I'm supposed to have another term in there that has the omega y. Yes. So I don't, so I don't, I don't think I need, you could sort of invert a statistic substitution like that. Yeah. It's kind of magic. But when you do, let's just, let me not worry too much about what that means. Uh, it seems to have dropped a minus sign. Because um, so I have one minus t inverse on the, and then I have t inverse minus one. Yeah, I skipped a step where I multiplied everything by t to the n. Oh, okay. So this is just some, okay. Oh, I, I see. There it is. Okay, yeah, I'm there's, I'm there's some stuff over here that pops out. No, I see yeah. it now. Thank you. Okay, so using this idea, we can get uh, a formula for this uh, supersymmetric function using fillings in the positive and negative alphabet, where for each negative term, we have a, a minus one. For each positive term, we have an extra t inverse. And now, so here we have a formula that includes some negative terms. So we're going to kill off all of the negative terms using a, a weight-preserving sign reversing involution. And it's going to kill, it ends up killing all fillings that have repeated entries in cells in this configuration. So either cells that are in the same row or cells that are in adjacent rows uh, to the northwest. So a, a quin of non-attacking fillings is one that has no attacking cells. So now we get a formula for P uh, in terms of quin of non-attacking fillings, but we still have to use the positive and negative alphabet. And the, the T inverse to the quin becomes T to the co quin. Okay, and now what we do is we can convert this to a formula just in terms of the positive alphabet by grouping together all of the super fillings with the same absolute value, and then the sum over all of those super fillings gives us this factor. So, so, that, so this factor is, ju is just coming from summing over all of those super fillings in the same, in the same group. So that's our formula. But now we notice that we still have this prefactor. So this prefactor is actually the T analog of the permutations of the columns of a filling. So now we ask, can we get rid of it just by fixing a canonical order on the columns so that we don't have to count all possible orderings of columns? And it turns out that we can do this. So we're going to uh, sort the, uh, split the fillings into classes where each class has a sorted representative and the weight of each class, so the weight over the fillings in each class is just going to be this, this perm factor times the weight of its representative. And we use a certain probabilistic column swapping operator that lets us generate uh, all of the fillings in a class from its sorted representative. 
And so this is generalizing a, a technique uh, that we used with Cortell, Haglund, Mason, and Williams to, uh, to get a compact formula for the modified McDonald. And so a Quinn sorted filling is one whose topmost entries in columns of equal height are increasing. And so we get this formula in terms of sorted fillings. Okay, so here's an example. So here I have a Quinn sorted tableau. So the entries in the top row in columns of the same height are increasing. And then these are all of the fillings that are in the class of this one. So the weight of this one is equal to the weight of this one times this perm factor, so this T analog, is equal to the sum over the weights of all of these tableau. And so we might ask why, so I showed before a formula for P lambda that comes from the haglund heyman lur inversion statistic, and that one had this ugly prefactor and here we don't have it, it's because, uh, it's because here we're using a statistic called RARM instead of ARM. So that's, that's where that comes from. Okay, so here's another example. So if we want to compute this coefficient of, uh, of this P lambda, so we, sh we should just get um, this little factor times these six terms. So if we were to do this using the HHL formula with the inversion statistic, we would have 228 tableau to sum over. So if we instead doing, do it, uh, if we do it with the Q inversion non-attacking tableau, then we have only 84 of them, but that's still way too many because if we sum over all the sorted tableau, then we only have six corresponding to these six terms. Yes, yes it's just a column sorting. So all, so, so these are, yeah, so if we just read the tops of the columns of equal height, they are all increasing. Oh, so if the partition is strict, it doesn't matter. Yeah, if the partition is strict, then um, there's the same number of fillings, yeah. So here's, here's a little comparison chart that I made. So notice that if we have many repeated parts, then that gives us the greatest difference in the number of terms. If we have a strict partition, then it doesn't really matter which formula we use. So uh, column A has the original HHL formula. Column B has the uncompactified uh, Quinv non-attacking formula. Column C and D has this formula that, that I presented today, uh, which is actually equal to the number of terms in, um, in this formula that's in terms of certain permuted basement tableau. Uh, the, the disadvantage of the permuted basement tableau formula is that there are more complicated statistics. And uh, column E is the multi-line Q formula that I showed in the beginning due to Cortell and Williams. So it does give us the fewest number of terms, which is nice, but unfortunately there's no nice tableau formulation for those multi-line Qs. Okay, so summary of what we've done. Again, so we so we've completed we've completed this picture. 
So we have, we have a formula in terms of this Q inversion statistic that, uh, that reflects the dynamics of the ASEP and the TASERP. And then the plethistic correspondence is captured by this superization, which also corresponds to fusion that gets us from ASEP to TASERP. OK, so a few, a few things. So these uh, quinf sorted tableau are in bijection with the multi-line cues of James Martin. So the multi-line cues I showed you in the beginning, they were the CMW version. And Martin's multi-line cues differ in a subtle way, but that that actually ends up being uh, significant, significant here. So we get an alternative multi-line Q formula for P lambda. And we also get an alternative tableau formula for the ASEP polynomials. So the ASEP polynomials are the polynomials that specialize to the stationary probabilities of the ASEP. OK, so another consideration. So our formula coincides with Lennart's alcove path compression formula when lambda has distinct parts. Um, so I'm wondering if we could use, uh, if, if this might be the right object to try to generalize Lennart's compression technique to get an alcove path formula for uh, general lambda. OK, and then um, so, so also, can we uh, extend this to non-symmetric McDonald's? I haven't looked at that yet. And would that even give us anything nice? I don't know. Uh, and finally, this, so I'm wondering if we could use the fact that we have an explicit Markov chain construction on the Q inversion tableau for the modified McDonald's. And if we could use those ideas to get a, to construct an explicit Markov chain on the, um, the sorted non-attacking tableau to project to the ASAP. Um, so that's all I have. So thank you.